Welcome everybody, Josh the RV Nerd, and you know I'm at one of my more western sister stores when we're taking a look at something from Northwood RV, because this is a brand that's based out of Oregon and doesn't have any sort of eastern side of the country production. It's a, a very Pacific Northwest based brand, and they do things a little bit differently. Like this 29S behind us here, I keep wanting to call it the 29s, but the 29S, it, um, it's a very common floor plan. Double over, double bunkhouse, direct entry bathroom, which is something I really like that I feel is almost kind of vanished a little bit from the RV industry and I don't really know why it's a very handy feature cuts down on a ton of dirty foot traffic through the RV but if you look at the weights on this thing if you back the video up a little bit she's thicker than a bowl of oatmeal this thing it, and it starts right from the ground up now we're looking at one today also with their um, off the grid package which adds some extra widgets and whiz bangs to it like 40 pound propane tanks up front and like a cargo generator tray uh, over the nose although it actually has on board um, generator accommodations they come gen prepped from the factory and that's another very rare quality normal travel trailers non toy haulers almost never come with generators and I can almost always tell when somebody is a viewer from a more western or remote area because they ask like where does the generator go in like this common say Keystone Passport and it doesn't there most of them are just not made for it this is it's got a custom engineered off-road chassis shock suspension system upgraded suspension with the off the grid package a little extra solar um like crazy thick mattress in this thing but it's also got some things I think you ain't gonna like. And I wanna try to go through and point out both the good and the maybe not good things and let you decide if this might be the right one for you and your money. That's Cause that's really the big question when you're shopping for an RV. Do you like it more than your money? And it's kind of fun for me sometimes going through Northwoods. Um, I started in this business in 2009 and I was uh, trained by people who cut their teeth on old Fleetwood RVs and I learned a lot about uh, those RVs when we, we got them in on trade. And uh, Mr. Nash, who founded Northwood RV, uh, had a very successful career at Fleetwood RV before you know moving out west and deciding he had uh, a way to do things better. And in some regards, I, I do agree. But there's still some of that classic Fleetwood DNA that I see and I kind of cut my teeth on that I just, uh, it, it kind of speaks to me here. Now I'm a little confused as to why there's a rear-facing slide side breeze window, but you may have noticed not a front-facing slide side breeze window. And things like that, kind of pointing out the things that make you go, hmm, and not just the pretty stuff. That's kind of what I'm going to do here if you're a first-time watcher of this video. I try to shoot these things as kind of fairly as I can. Now, these are all the shades of HOA-approved brown, and they have all the different yellows and golds in the window treatments, and some people love that, and some people don't. And I have it on pretty reasonable authority. There may be some decor updating happening in the future of these. Now, that is what I call a true U dinette, where it is like uh, roughly like seven foot long. But look at the cushions on those things. Look how thick that is. And the whole structure of that thing is, is really bulky, heavy duty. I'm not a big fan of the pedestal table dinettes, though, but that's like screwdriver work. That's super easy stuff to change out. Now, you're going to see as we go through the video uh, in the bedroom, in the kitchen, and in the bathroom, you've got big XL vent fans. They do not do any four inch fart fans in these campers. They are the Fajita Friday Fume Fighters Exclusivo. Um, <laughs> look at the oven. First of all, the oven's big, but look at the stove. A side splash. Why? Why? Is that so rare in the RV industry? This is also an exceptionally rare find right here. Because they have thicker sidewalls, they can actually install household power outlets in the walls. Now, it's still difficult for them to do because it's a laminated wall, but they do it. It's a very, very rare thing to encounter right there. Currently, they're only doing gas electric two-way refrigerators. I'd be kind of curious. Understanding this is a brand that was really built with a boondock focus, would you be interested in a 12-volt uh, a compressor fridge? I still kind of would, but that's just me. I'm more of a Midwestern park camper. And here's a little cautionary tale, ladies and gentlemen. We managed to do a little bit of lot damage, and we're currently in process of fixing this. So our mistake is going to potentially be here for your benefit and, and your learning. You see how that uh, drawer knob is just busted, and the slide-out fascia is a little goobered? Well, that's because... Uh, that drawer slid open slightly 
behind the slide and nobody eyeballed double checked it to make sure it was clear of obstruction before opening the slide and they got to a shoving match and who lost is well in this case us otherwise it could have been you but i actually kind of want to give them a little bit of credit here so yeah this this sucks that this happened but the the drawer is it still is buttery smooth it didn't screw up the drawer. A lot of times, most manufacturers, if something like that happened, it would bust the drawer glides and everything. I'm actually shocked. I am, I'm, I'm just flat gobsmacked. I am gooped and gagged that that did not uh, bust that drawer all to shreds. Just kind of a shock there. Uh, I like that hanging towel bar. And up top here, again, you've got that big vent fan in here. Um, the uh, The bathroom has... One really weird, uh, are we, oops, sorry, there's a door there. I forgot that, <laughs> geez, anyway. Like, it's a nice big sink, that's cool, but the medicine cabinet, like, faces the door. The medicine cabinet has a perpendicular orientation from the sink, and I, I don't know that I, I love that. Now, I do like the headroom up in the shower. That was very, very comfortable. Um, <laughs> I kind of just looked at it and I was like, I wonder if I could fit in that tub. Um, I wasn't sure how it was going to work, but I did manage to squeeze myself in there. And I kind of thought, you know, if Uncle Gary ties one on, it'd be a good place for him to maybe sleep it off while he's over there. But, um, you know, I was able to do it. I wasn't sure I was getting out either. But again, I also managed porcelain foot flush stool with some good space around that. That is, that is really, really good uh, room in there if you are a little bit bigger person. Now, one other thing I noticed... I prefer it when the bunk lights are closer to the foot of the bed, basically closer to where we're standing right now. Because when they're all the way up in the headboard, then okay, that's cool for the kid. But if they're kind of not cooperating, or if you, if somebody forgets it's on, climbing up in there as an adult is a little bit of a process. But I mean, if my fat butt could do it, I'm pretty sure just about, uh, well, anybody could. Now, one of the things this brand does very well, I think, is storage. So starting here under the dinette, you've got dual full extension drawers. There is a set of household outlets under the, the dinette benches, by the way. And the backside of the dinette, you could get to it from inside, but it also opens from the exterior. Now, their cabinet shop, come check the fit and finish in Northwood. I'll put them up against just about anybody. They have all hardwood cabinet uh, doors and drawer fronts. Very heavy-duty uh, drawer glides on these things. And... Um, like, like if you, you 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 can feel a difference in this. It doesn't it doesn't translate to camera, but I'm telling you, it once you see it in person, uh, the the difference is obvious. Like it's a difference you can literally feel. And I was actually in. Some folks came in earlier to say hi to me, and I was in here, and they uh, just kind of looked around and they were kind of looking at one of these. So they started going through it, and they just kept going, huh, huh. And I was like, what's up, guys? And they said, it just feels more solid. Like, they couldn't exactly put their finger on it. But even with an uneducated eye, they knew there was something a little bit thicker, bigger, bulkier going on here. And again, if I'm going to be picky, I think that if they would have shrunk those bottom cabinets a little bit, they'd give me even an open-air clutter-cutter shoe garage, I'd be on board with that. I think that that would be a handy feature. Um, if I'm not mistaken, one of the few bummer points I have on this RV is I believe that's a Camp Queen. Now, they put an awesome mattress in there, but I do believe that is a Camp Queen bed. Now, you can't see it from where I'm standing, but that little headboard area over on the left-hand side, there's actually a set of USB outlets over there. So, um, you know, some handy... Oh, that, I forget, they put them on both sides. Some companies only put them on one side. I'm glad they put them on both. It's a little bit dark in there, but you might be able to, to get a quick little peek at that. Big campsite view window. Holy cow, that's a big breeze window. I just kind of tuned into that. Now, up top here, this is something I see people do aftermarket all the time. And here, they're doing it factory standard. Again, another one of those big XL vent fans. I am a, well, I'm a fan <laughs> of those fans. Now, in case you hadn't caught in the living room, that's a 360 spin around uh, entertainment center right there. Um, I, if you want to, you could sit there and I, I guess watch yourself sleep at night. I, I don't know. I guess it just depends on exactly what you're looking for. Now, there is a very interesting quality in this bedroom. It 
lacks any and all hanging storage. Um, in the Midwest, there's always at least one hanging closet typically in an RV. This one, it's, it's all shelf dresser space. And frankly, that would work fine for me. I don't bring hanging clothes when I go camping. I, I just fold up everything anyway. So this would actually work very well for me. I, I don't think it's necessarily a bad idea. Now doing a moonwalk backwards. Um, we're gonna see more of this on the outside, but when you get the off the grid package, they add some little embellishments on the inside of the RV, even though most of that package is definitely reserved for uh, what is outside of the RV. Now the road mode looks like holy crap it just enclosed right in on us but the way that the the countertop and the sofa interact you sort of serpentine your way around here and the fact is back to front front to back you can walk all the way through this rv and you can do it from either entry door and as you're seeing right here uh you know if you need to be able to get to the bunks the, the ladder's located in an intelligent location you can I mean, this gets just a fantastic travel access score in my book. Now, if what you're looking for is something a little more in the way of an ultralight, um, I regret to inform you, you are most certainly barking up the wrong tree. The GVW of this is over 10,000 pounds. Like, I don't uh, consider this half ton towable. I don't think this is appropriate to try to, to, to pair up with a half ton. I think it's too much trailer. It's got enough length that it's already kind of questionable. Then you put that kind of weight in there. Oof. Now, it does have, like, nearly 3,000 pounds of cargo capacity, but it doesn't matter if you, like, well, what if I pack light? That doesn't count, not legally. So uh, I, I try to play by the safety letter of the law. Now, the uh, off-the-grid package, and you know you're looking at one of these uh, that's off-the-grid because there's, like, 40,000 stickers around this RV, or maybe closer to 37. I think it's closer to 37 than zero that say off-the-grid, like, everywhere you look, off-the-grid, off-the-grid, off-the-grid. Um yeah i get the idea you get the light bar up front you get that extra cargo tray upgrade to 40 pound propane tanks which that's something that kind of baffles me on a lot of rvs um that there's there's not more emphasis on better propane capacity uh for something that might be used for boondock purposes because you are going to be using the propane a lot more when you're boondocking uh as compared to you know your uh, a lot of your electrical services because you're not unless you bring a generator which again this rv could have you're not going to get a lot of 110 service now those big bundles of ugly looking stuff that is the uh the, the propane tank covers now you've always got a little side mount solar prep plug so if you want to park under the shade and chase the sun with a portable panel you can up there on the roof line you actually get a little bit of a peek at it here from ground level you've got a uh, a base standard 45 watt battery tender nothing major but while the rv's in storage it's going to keep the batteries from dying that's cool um the otg package comes with an additional 170 uh 5 watt panel and you can actually expand on it a little bit more uh from there if you're so inclined um back of the u dinette just to kind of show you here just very classic camping features no space gone to waste now usually you could tear apart the dinette to get to that storage but now you don't have to and then uh, over here in the rear corner, cleverly hidden under the bunks. Their smaller Nashes don't always have space for this. Some of the smaller Nashes, they actually lack a full pass-through compartment because they have to make accommodations for a generator. Now that's kind of a very common toy haulery way to do it, but um, here under a bunk, they're able to do something else. Now normally, you could just use it for storage and being sealed like that, it would actually make a really good place to keep like um, sewer hose totes to keep all your sewer stuff uh, away and to make sure you don't have any sort of odor bleed up into the RV. Now, the uh, sewer connection, it's a single sewer outlet all the way back here in the corner, and it is up just under the skirt line. So it's got some really good ground clearance. Another one of those uh, big old light bars on the outside of this thing over here. And if you are if you are camping off grid, you're camping in the middle of nowhere, those things are actually really handy. So you can have more visibility around your campsite, which is helpful for just a whole bunch of different reasons. Now it's dangerously close to being a propanus, which is when the gas comes out the back side but coming off the the uh, actual sidewall it is still a propane cooker hooker now this kind of throws people if you've never been camping if you've never been in an rv before and had the experience and lifestyle a toilet staring at the neighbors feels really weird i get it um it's a deadbolt door and it 
allows for easy travel access and it allows for just direct entry if somebody's been outside or if you're traveling or uh, just if you know the kids are dirty it just cuts down on tons and tons of foot traffic um, the uh, uh, what do I want to say mud flaps that come with the OTG package is just a nice little thoughtful touch and the tires get upgraded that aggressive knobby style tire which it looks very cool um, is the, I'm not really sure is there any significant benefit uh, to, to just the style of tire, you know, cause normally these have good year endurance. Um, I, I always laugh. It's like, does that help, you know, not the, the tires not spin out in the mud. <laughs> um, you also upgrade the suspension package, uh, to get that extra shock dampener, uh, with the OTG thing. And, but no matter what, you'll have, uh, actual shock suspension on every single Northwood Nash Arctic Fox travel trailer that they make. I would, I would say every single Northwood, but some of those are truck campers. So no, they, they don't have shocks on the suspension because they don't have suspension. Uh, one last little note here. That is a big 10 gallon water heater on that sucker. So, uh, you know, even if, uh, you're in the parks or off the grid, whatever you can, especially the family in this thing, you can have a couple back to back to back hot showers. And as always, I'll leave you links in the video description to check for pricing and availability wherever we happen to have one of these parked at many of our stores. Now, uh, a lot of the stuff you see on this channel here, like I'm based out of Michigan, so a lot of it is very, uh, you know, uh, Midwestern, Eastern time zone kind of based, but a very large chunk of our company, the vast majority of our company, is on like, you know, mountain and, and Pacific time, where we have quite a few of these. So if you like what you see, there's a chance that your nearest business probably has access to one, and if not, we can always ship them, although naturally there's uh, costs associated with shipping, but we can do it, you know. Um, I tell you what, these things really hold pretty strong value on the eastern side of the country because no one's, uh, no one can ever get their hands on them. So when one does come available, they get scooped right up real awful fast. A little pro tip for you from your Uncle Josh after several years of being a professional looker at Irv Campers. And let me know what you think of this one. Until then, take care. Until then, I don't know, that didn't. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>